All right, let's just dive in. Section 2.2, day one, polynomial functions of higher degree. That's basically it. Um, so if you watched my pre-lesson, you got the idea. The only thing I didn't really draw your attention to initially was, see, A is referred to as the leading coefficient because it's the coefficient of the highest powered term. See, this is a 3, 2, 1, none. And then A, see, when A is positive, um, your cubic function is going to generally look like this. Now, when I say like this, it's going up to the right, down to the left. Now, remember what we said. A cubic function is going to have two bumps in it. So it's going to go up and down and then up. Okay? That's if A is positive. These are just general rules. Now, if A is negative then I know from this that it's going to go up to the left, it's going to go down to the right. Again, very generic random uh, drawings, but generally speaking, I know, and then so if A is neg, I know that there's two bumps, and I know that A is negative, and so I'm just going to go, okay, there's one, and then there's two. Okay? Just general rules. So a cubic function has at most two turning points. Okay, let's move over to this cortex. Well, once again, we got some rules. Uh, we got A, which is our leading coefficient, and here's some special rules. If A is positive, then I always think of it like this. This might not be politically correct. Well, the second one isn't. Uh, positive, positive, this only deals with cortex, okay? Positive people are, see this? Winners. In other words, you got to have a positive attitude if you ever want to accomplish anything. That's just a fact. So, the general idea is, look, if A is positive, I know it's going to go like this. I know it's going to go like this. And I just make a W for win. Now, there's going to be massive variations of this, trust me. But generally speaking, positive people are winners. So, there's a W, okay? Um, now, here comes the politically incorrect part. Forgive me for saying this, but it's a good memory tool. If you're negative, if A is negative, which is just the leading coefficient, you know, all the time, eventually you're going to have somebody feel like you're a moron. Well, there's the letter M. Doesn't that kind of look like the letter M? So, sorry if that offends you out there, but, um, you know, we all have our days. But if you're constantly negative, I mean, anyways, no offense. We all have our bad days. All right. So generally speaking, um, this is a generalization that I, that I just explained to you. But here's the deal, you guys. I'm going to draw your attention to this. Odd multiplicity goes through the x-axis. That's huge. And then... Even multiplicity bounces off the x-axis. What in the world are these things even talking about? Uh, they will be significant on the back page. Okay, so I'm going to hit pause on that explanation, and then we'll get to it. Let's dive into this. It says, describe how to transform the graph of an appropriate monomial function, f of x equals x to the nth, and find the y-intercept. Well, um... This got this got misplaced, but all right. Anyways, so what this is saying is we look at our parts, and what this is saying is if we have f of x equals x cubed, remember this is what we would refer to as normal. Now we're going to go to our rules. That right there would flip it over the x-axis. That's all it's asking us to do. That one-third, because it's less than one, A is less than one, that's going to be a vertical shrink. Now, remember, we can say three or one-third. This person thinking, is thinking division. This person is thinking multiplication. What's plus three? Plus three would be left three. Minus one would be down one. Now, because there's limited space here, I'm going to bring it up here because it does say Find the y-intercept. Well, think about this, guys. If I have an x-axis and a y-axis, 
and I have a point somewhere on the y-axis, and that's what it's asking me to find, the y-intercept, I know a truth about all of these points that are on the y-axis. X has to equal zero. That's a fact. So really, when you say find the y-intercept, that's saying, hey, put, put a zero in there. So I'm going to do it right here. So I'm going to go y equals negative one-third, zero plus three cubed minus one. Let's do some mental arithmetic. What's 3 cubed? 27. Times a third? 9. Negative 9 minus 1 would be negative 10. So my y-intercept would be 0, negative 10. Okay? Just to get familiar with some of this lingo before we turn the page. All right, let's do the same thing for this guy. What does that 2 do? Well, there's no negative, so there's no reflection over the x-axis, but that's a vertical stretch. Factor of 2, this moves it to the right 1, and that negative 3 moves it down 3. Those are the rules of graphing. Now, to find the y-intercept, again, I just put 0 in for x. So really, this g of x turns into y. y equals 2 times 0 minus 1 to the 4th minus 3. Negative 1 to the 4th is just 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So my y-intercept would be 0, negative 1. All right. These instructions should have been written on the other page. So let's remember it. Match the polynomial function with its possible graph from above. All right. Well, um, yeah, what a typo. This is all they wanted you to do, okay? Number one, you're looking at that and you're like, hey, it's a cubic, which means it could be like, this, if A is positive, or it's like this, if A is negative. So, look at A is a 1, which means A is positive. And it's a cubic with A is positive. So, for example, 3, I would find that, and I'd go right here, A, generally speaking, okay? Generally speaking, it would look like this. So, that would be A. How about this guy? Well, a couple things are going on. Number one, that's a cortic, because that's a 4. So, I know my options are going to be C or D. Well, if I look and I say, well, look at that negative. That's the same thing as a negative 1, which means A is negative 1, which means A is less than 0. And I go, aha, it's going to be a mole realm. So that's an M upside down winner. Okay? This person can turn their, turn their life around. They just think about positive things for a little while. Okay, too deep. I get it. Okay, so this would be, what did I say? Letter D. Letter D. Now here comes the meat and potatoes, you guys. This is truly it. So it says graph the function. We're going to start with what's called our zeros, okay? What do you mean our zeros? We're going to look right here and say, all right, what value for x would cause this to be 0? x is 1. What about this one? Negative 1. What about this one? Negative 2. Well, what do those things even mean? Well, if x is 1, that's a 1, 0. If x is negative 1, it's negative 1, 0. If x is negative 2, it's negative 2, 0. Because remember what f of x equals. It equals y. That's why all of our y's are 0. That's why they're called zeros. Okay? So we're going to plot these points. 1, 0. Oh, I think they want us, because these are 1s, just to spread it out a little bit. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So negative 1, 0 would be right here. And then negative 2, 0 would be right here. All right. So now we got to think about our rules. First of all, is this a cubic or is this a quartic? Well, ignore the negative 1, ignore the 1, ignore the 2. What's x times x times x? That would be x cubed, so we have a cubic. Also, 
If I was to multiply this all out, would A be positive or would A be negative? Again, just look at the X's. X times X times X is X cubed. In other words, it'd be 1X cubed. So I know that A is positive. Well, if it's a cubic and A is positive, and I know these points are three points that go through the x-axis. Watch this now. i got to look at my basic characteristics. A is positive, so I know it's going to go up and to the right as it goes to the right. It's going to go down to the left as it goes to the left. So I'm going to take those spots, and I'm going to go, okay, up to the right. Again, perfection? No. Looking for general truth. Up to the right, because A is positive. Down to the left because A is positive and it's a cubic. Now we have a decision to make. What's going to happen in between here and here and here and here? Well, I do know that because it's a cubic, it's going to have two bumps. Okay? So I know it's got to go like this and like that, but the problem is it could go way down here and it could go way up here. There's a lot of things going on here, okay? So I need to figure out exactly where it goes. Well, here's the halfway point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use some common sense here. If this is 1 and this is negative 1, what's exactly halfway? That's x equals 0. We're going to plug that in. So I'm going to let my x equals 0 plug it into this little rascal and find out what my y is. So y is 0 minus 1. 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, and so this is negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. So I know my it's going to correspond with 0, negative 2. So I'm going to go 0 down to here, and so now I know that it goes down to here and then back up. Okay? Question is, how do I figure out how high this thing or how low this thing goes? Once again, we're going to pick the halfway spot between negative 1 and negative 2. Well, that's saying let x equal negative 1.5. And plug it in to here, here, and here. So, crunch it out. y equals negative 1.5 minus 1. i got to write down a little bit, create some space. Negative 1.5 plus 1. And then I get negative 1.5 plus 2. Just going to hammer this out. So this is negative 2.5. This right here would be negative 0.5. And this right here would be 0.5. All right, now i got to hit the pause button because I didn't bring a calculator. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to plug these in. So I get, you know, I know a negative times a negative times a positive is positive. So I'm not going to mess with that. So I'm just going to go 2.5 times 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.625. So I get positive 0 0.625, which is a little over halfway. So that means here's my, here's my 1, here's my 2, a little over halfway up. So it would be right about here. Here we go up and then down. And I've completed my cubic, my first cubic. Now, I've only got like one minute left on this recording, and I've got three different problems to do, so I'm going to have to hit you guys up with part two. So I'll see you at part two.